In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. From 1 John. <clears throat> if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we would light in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. The prayer of the day. Let us pray. O oh God, the strength of those who hope in you, be present and hear our prayers. And because in the weakness of our mortal nature we can do nothing good without you, give us the help of your grace, so that in keeping your commandments we may please you in will and deed. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I commend to you the first lesson from Genesis for later this evening. And we'll begin this evening with Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, Lord, hear my Lord, voice. Lord, Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, in order that you may be feared. I wait for you, O Lord. My soul waits in your word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who keep watch for the morning more than those who keep watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love. With the Lord there is plenteous redemption. For the Lord shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Our second lesson this evening is from St. Paul's second letter to the church at Corinth, beginning in the fourth chapter. Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe, and so we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light, momentary, affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comprehension as we look not to the things that are seen but to the things that are unseen 
For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let us rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark, the third chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Then Jesus went home, and the crowd gathered again, so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, He is out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, He is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons he casts out the demons. And he called them to him and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then indeed he may plunder his house. Truly I say to you, all sins will be forgiven, the children of man, and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they were saying, he has an unclean spirit. And his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. And a crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And Jesus answered them, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. This evening the word comes to us from St. Mark's Gospel, the third chapter, a peculiar faith and church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the things that we humans have done since the fall is that we've grown comfortable and easy with the sin-fractured world. Here's how people will say this, and here's how you know people are comfortable with things the way they are. They'll say, and perhaps we've even said this, and we can fall into this. We'll say, death is just a natural part of life for us. It's just the circle of life, we'll say. As Christians, we'll say that. that death is just a natural part of life. <clears throat> no, dear Christians. Death is not how it's supposed to be around here. Death is foreign to this world, to God's good creation as it was before the fall. Darkness is foreign to God's good creation as it was before the fall. Now we've come to expect the world to always be like this, and, and we've all gotten used to things. The scribes in our Lord's day, they were used to this world being this way. They knew that people were born, they lived, they died, and that's just how it is here. Our Lord's critics, as you read them throughout the Gospels, were comfortable with the one that Jesus says who rules over this dark world, the evil one. If you've ever seen that movie, um, Shawshank Redemption, do you remember one of the characters, or probably midway through the movie, he had spent his entire life in, in, in a penitentiary in a state penitentiary, and then he gets released, and they, for a short period of the film, they show this guy out in the world, and, and he can't function because he's so institutionalized in the prison. He can't work at a job at a grocery store because everything that he does, he has to ask the manager, can I do this, can I do that, because he doesn't know what it's like to live in that world. We, Many of us can become institutionalized to this broken, sin-filled world. We become used to it. And we don't consider that there's another world that our Lord is working to bring to us now. So it is that Jesus arrives on the scene and he starts preaching and he starts healing people. We read about this in Mark's Gospel. And people are given new life and they're given this vision by Jesus through his preaching of this new world that is coming into being. So the ones who have this, this glorious vision of this new 
world, this new creation that, is, that Jesus is ushering in, once they hear about it and once they have received new life in him, they can't get enough. They want to be around him. Jesus is preaching and teaching, and they gather around him. They want more of his word. And it's so much that they can't even sit down to eat. The crowd gathers around Jesus. Think about that for us as Christians. We've heard this word of promise from the Lord. We've come to believe. We've been baptized into Jesus. And we have this new life in him. And what is it for us? It is the greatest thing that has ever happened to us. And we've all had great prosperity in our lives. Children and a marriage and children. And we've seen great successes in our lives. We've had terrible valleys that we've gone through all of us. But the greatest thing that has ever happened to all of us gathered here tonight is that we've heard the gospel, we've come to believe it, and we've received new life in Jesus. We've been baptized into him. And so we only want Jesus. Because that word of promise that has come into our ears has broken the chains that have held us in slavery, right? Of sin, death, and the devil. Those chains have been broken. And we now have this word of promise from Jesus that we no longer belong to the evil one. That he's still in a rear guard action in this world. Of course he is. But he has no sovereignty over us. You, dear Christians, are no longer entrapped in the chains of sin. You're no longer subject to the fear of death. But instead... On account of Jesus and by his death and resurrection, you are, as the gospel declares, and as you have heard and come to believe, forgiven. Free from those things. Free from those chains of sin, death, and the devil, the unholy trinity. They no longer hold you. Now, of course, when Jesus, when Jesus is preaching and he's bringing the gospel to these people, they want to be around it. But others, critics, what will they say? And you heard it in our gospel lesson. He's out of his mind. It's not true. Our eyes perceive what reality is. People die and they stay dead. Jesus has a different word. We, as Christians, can fall into this trap too. We have a we can fall into a trap of, you know what, maybe the critics of Jesus are right. Maybe he was just some outlandish preacher from 2,000 years ago from the middle of nowhere. Maybe the Pharisees and the scribes, they were right. And that's the devil. That's the devil preaching to you. And you, Christians, have a response. Your response to the evil one preaching to you, saying that, you know what, this is all there is. You say, you know what, evil one, devil, whatever, I belong to Jesus Christ, my Lord. <clears throat> he has conquered you. He has conquered my sins. He has taken my sins away. He is alive today. And resurrection is the word of the day. I am not afraid of you, evil one. I am not afraid of death. I know Jesus Christ. He has me, and I have him. And because of this, then, I'm not afraid. If you preach that, if you preach that, you know, and you're in that moment of despair, I promise you, the Holy Spirit will be upon you. You will be able to defeat this thing. Whatever it is that comes your way. This is what living by faith is like. Martin Luther described it as a life under attack. The attacks of, of the evil one, the attacks of the flesh, the world. And when those attacks come, you go back to the promises of Jesus. You remember your baptism. Take some water from the faucet, put it on your forehead, and remember... And say to yourself, I am baptized. I have died with Jesus and I have been raised with him. People, your friends, your family, whatever, may say that's weird. That's strange. That's fine. We Christians, we're a peculiar people. We belong to a peculiar church. 
And that's all right. We don't look for the world's approval. We're following after Jesus. And he leads us. He leads us all the way home. So dear Christians, hold firm to those promises of Jesus. He has you. And nothing can ever separate you from his love. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of the day is hymn number 559 in the green hymnal. Hymn number 559.